Her brothers Eladon and Elro here were out upon errantry, for they rode often far afield with the rangers of the north, forgetting never their mother's torment in the dens of the orcs. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today we will be taking a look at the short yet interesting story of the twin sons of Elrond and Celebrian, Eladon and Elro here. There will be links to sources and related articles and videos in the description and cards. My friends, thank you all so much for being here today. Let's begin our tale. Born in 130 of the Third Age, Eladon, whose name means Elf Man in Sindarin, and Elrohir, whose name could also mean either Elf Man or Elf Knight, depending on one's translation, were the firstborn children of Elrond and Celebrian, daughter of Celeborn and Galadriel. Now, just like their father and uncle, Elrond and Elros, were twins, they carried on this legacy. And like many of the brothers in Tolkien's works, such as Elrond and Elros, Isildur and Daenerion, Húrin and Húr, Faramir and Boromir, and surely some others, Eladon and Elro here would be closely bonded, sharing many of their later adventures and purposes together. Indeed, it was difficult to tell them apart, as they both had dark hair and grey eyes, but while we don't know their personalities too deeply, we can be sure that they had some different social traits, like one being more extroverted than the other, etc., like it often is with brothers. When they were 111 years old, their younger sister Arwen Undomia would be born. As the Third Age progressed, we can't be too sure of their deeds during the early and mid years, but since they lived in Rivendell in the north, I imagine they would journey together across the lands, and perhaps even fight against Angmar when it besieged Rivendell, sometime between 1356 and 1409 of the Third Age. Perhaps they would even go on to fight Angmar further alongside their father and Glorfindel. Now, their story really begins with the capture of their mother Celebrian at the hands of orcs in the year 2509. While Celebrian was traveling over the Misty Mountains on her way to see her mother Galadriel in Lothlorien, as both Celebrian and Arwen did this from time to time, she was waylaid and captured by orcs in the Redhorn Pass. Eladon and Elro here, who were likely made aware of this by word from Celebrian's scattered guard, tracked and rescued their mother from the orcs, but not before Celebrian had received a poison wound from the orcs. Due to Eladon and Elrohir's valiant rescue of Celebrian, she was brought back to Imladris, where Elrond healed her wound and body. But in spirit, she lost all delight in Middle-earth, and the next year she sailed to Valinor, leaving her family in Middle-earth. The capture of their mother depicted a shift both in Middle-earth at large, as passes that were once safe were not so anymore, not even to elves, and Eladon and Elrohir as well, for they grew a hatred of the orcs, which spurned them on to be far more active than many other elves in the late Third Age. The twins would befriend the Dúnedain and their chieftains, joining them in fighting and hunting orcs. They would even be with Arathorn, father of Aragorn, during the orc hunt that took his life in 2933. Gilrein and young Aragorn would go to live in Imladris, and as Aragorn grew up, he saw the sons of Elrond like brothers, and he would fall in love with Elrond's daughter, whom he only met later on in his youth. Indeed, just as Eladon and Elro here were respected and admired by all the Dúnedain rangers of the north, it would be no less so with Chieftain Aragorn. And I would not be surprised to learn that they had many adventures together, the three of them, even if such was not explicitly written in the canon. And so, during the early events of the Quest of the Ring in 3018, Eladon and Elro here would scout paths ahead of the Fellowship's departure from Rivendell, and I wouldn't be surprised if Eladon and Elro here had also even searched for Frodo and Aragorn during their journey to Imladris, just as Glorfindel had done. Eladon and Elro here would go even as far as the Silverlode and the strange land beyond the river on the eastern side of the Misty Mountains before returning to Rivendell, ere the Fellowship departed. This was, of course, while those paths could still be traversed over the mountains and were not overrun by orcs. Now, I should also mention that, with their limited lore, Eladon and Elrohir are utilized to great effect in video games such as The Lord of the Rings Online and The War in the North at this point in the canon, before they departed southward with the gathered Dúnedain rangers becoming the Grey Company. They would take on bright mail under cloaks of grey, and on the field of Pelennor, the two brothers would wear stars upon their brows. Indeed, in March of 3019, Eladon and Elrohir, who traveled alongside Halbarad and the other rangers, reached Aragorn and Rohan, and they would be by his side for the rest of Aragorn's story throughout the events of the War of the Ring. These two elves, who were again more active than many of their kin due to their hatred of the orcs, journeyed with Aragorn through the paths of the dead, coming through South Gondor to Pelargir, and then onto the Pelennor Fields. After the Battle of the Pelennor Fields, they would aid Aragorn in healing folk in the Houses of Healing of Minas Tirith, having inherited some of their father's skills in such things. 
being yet also descended of Melian the Maya and kin of the kings of Numenor, who also had the hands of healing. They would be present during the last debate of the captains. After this, they would go on to stand with Aragorn and his host at the Battle of the Moranon, and just as their father had seen to Sauron's defeat in Mordor in the Second Age, they aided in Sauron's final downfall at the end of the Third Age. And so it was that their mother was finally avenged on the Lord of the Orcs, just as Arathorn himself was, and Eladon and Elrohir could have peace in that. They would attend Aragorn's coronation, and then they would go north to accompany the procession of the elves and their sister Arwen southward once again, that Arwen and Aragorn might marry. Eladon and Elrohir, who had been there when Aragorn's own father died, saw the son of Arathorn and the heir of their uncle Elros become all he was meant to be. King of the reunited kingdom, greatest of all living men in those later days, the last man to marry an elf, and their brother-in-law. After the union of King Elisar and Arwen Undomio, Eladon and Elrohir would return to their home in Rivendell in the north. They took part in the mighty procession that saw to the funeral of Theoden and went back through Rohan, gradually dispersing, and eventually they came home in the north. Even after their father left these shores, reuniting with their mother in the west, in the late Third Age, early Fourth Age, they yet stayed in Imladris for reasons unknown. I believe they would see to the continued defense and end of the orcs in the north, even as Celeborn, their grandfather, and others amongst the Noldor came to dwell in Rivendell from Lothlorien before also sailing west. I do not believe Eladon and Elrohir gave up their elven immortality, but rather they had more to give in Middle-earth before leaving, seeming neither young nor old to marry the hobbit when he encountered them in Rohan. But just as other elves would grow weary of these hither shores, I doubt not the same happened with the sons of Elrond, and perhaps, in the end, they would sail west alongside their grandfather Celeborn in the early years or decades of the Fourth Age, bidding final farewells to their sister Arwen and brother-in-law Aragorn. Surely they would reunite with their mother Celebrian, whose strife had given them a desire for vengeance upon the orcs and had driven them during their time in Middle-earth, and their father Elrond, in whose mighty footsteps they oft followed. Perhaps, even today, they yet hunt with Arome and others of the elven kindred, our elder siblings of old. And so, we come to the end of our tale on Eladon and Elrohir, the twin sons of Elrond. From the story of Eladon and Elrohir, we see a theme of brotherly love and companionship. Few others are there who understand us like our own brothers and sisters, and we must support them just as they support us. What's more, we must strive to protect the ones we love, just as Elrohir and Eladon saved their mother from the orcs. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this Epic Character Histories video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts on Eladon and Elrohir? Let me know in the comments below. My brother and I both share a passion for Tolkien ever since our father introduced us to Middle-earth, and so I find a deep connection with the stories of Brotherhood in Tolkien's Legendarium, although I do wish we had more lore on these awesome elven characters. Thanks to our Valar tier patrons, Adrian De La Tour, Chris Ortner, Kyle Wetzel, Peter Shepard, Jonathan Putnam, Mark Kralik, Blair Scout, Merton, John Hume, Sam McBee, Matt Sabatch, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Ben Gardner, Condar, Reese Jenkins, Adam Petrolik, Kuzan, Brandon Glidden, Molly Sullivan, Daniel Burns, Anthony Harmon, and Dorwin Gray. Thank you so much, and thanks to all of our patrons and YouTube members. The support means the world to me. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today. And I'll see you all again later this week with a special video on the greatest friendships in Middle-earth for Tolkien Reading Day, March 25th. You all are the best, my friends. Thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one.